Welcome everyone to the final E press conference for the vacant British light heavyweight title this Saturday, August 22nd. Hennessy Sports live on Channel 5 between your co challengers, Chad Sugden and Shekhan Pitters. Can't wait. It's got all the ingredients to be a great fight. Shaq, we're going to start with you. How have you been preparing during recent weeks and, and how have things changed from when you originally thought you were going to be taking on Craig Richards to six months ago, I guess now, when you found out it was going to be Chad in the opposite corner instead? Yeah, for me, um, preparation has been good. Nothing's changed for me. Um, it's obviously the same plan, same goal, same ambitions to win the British title. Didn't matter who was in the ring with me, to be fair. Um, just business, isn't it? Just got to win this title, which I plan to win and do. And that's all it is. We always focus on our game and camp uh, and what we've got to, you know, what we're going to bring and what we've got to do. And that's that. And Chad, when you were called in as a short notice opponent for Craig Richards last December, I believe it was, I was ringside for that one. Did you ever think that you might end up replacing him um, in the British title fight later on in the year and that there'd be a pandemic in the middle? Uh, yeah, of course, obviously, you couldn't predict the pandemic. But <laughs> yeah, I was um, beating Craig Richards, obviously well, getting the draw. If I beat him, I knew I would take his position in whatever he had going on sort of thing. But obviously, with the with the draw, he was still at, uh, in line to fight Shekhan. So, I then, um, obviously, he pulled out in the fight in March and I, I stepped in, which, is, uh, which I was planning on doing anyway if he did pull out. Cause the Hennessy Swartz had me as a reserve fighter. And then, now, obviously, with the pandemic, it's given me time to focus on it fully and, yeah, getting it, do all the work in the gym and, fight on Saturday. Looking at a press release that came out this morning, I don't know if you've seen it or not, Shaq seemed very confident he's going to beat you inside the distance, said whether your corner throwing the towel or the ref stops it, you won't hear the final bell. What do you make of that? Because you're known as a tough competitor. He's confident, obviously, but look, I, I believe I'm going to win in the same fashion, so that makes for an exciting fight and people want to tune in on Saturday because I, I, I believe I'm going to stop in. So... If he, if he thinks it the same way, then, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good night. Shaq, what do you make of that? They say the bigger you are, the harder you fall. Is, is that going to be the case on Saturday night? No, nah, mate. Um, like I said, I, 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 I'm, I'm big for the weight. I'm strong. I carry a lot of power. Everyone say on Saturday night, man, what I'm about. Um, as I say, you know, he's had a good... He's, I'm sure he'll say it's his best camp or he's had a good camp. I'm glad he's had the, you know, the time to prepare fully as well so it's going to be the best Chad it's going to be the best me and that's that you know what I mean I know we've had a great camp and um, you know we'll be victorious like I said You've had a few things to say about some of the sparring um, Chad's had in the build up and maybe some of the shots he's taken during that want to elaborate on any of that while you're both on the same that, that, platform? That's, yeah, that, yeah that's what I said in the first one what just obviously wasn't recorded you know what I mean he's had plenty of black eyes from Jose and you know what I'm saying he knows that talking about are you following us I thought you didn't do any research into what I was doing it's not I've seen you in the press I've seen you in the first thingy I've seen you in the first head to head you had a black eye in the uh, first head to head you know what I mean you're forever getting black eyes bro so so what just because I have hard sparring me look when we get in there yeah doesn't matter you can I had a black eye in my last fight and got a draw it means means nothing like what you think what you, you draw with Craig yeah, so do you not see my face in that one? I'd have broken it before that. You, you're laughing at me, but you, you, you uh, say you can end my career. Yeah? I'm 26, you're 31 years of age. This is your last chance. You think? You're, you're done, man. Listen, bro, this ain't kickboxing, man. This is boxing. This is boxing. And like I said, on Saturday, I'm going to punch your face. And, me. I didn't on think Saturday, that. I'm going to punch your face. And therefore, you know what I mean? You always, you, it doesn't matter. Like, you, you, at the end of the day, you've showed up countless black eyes. I can hit hard. I'm accurate with my shots, mate. So, you know what I mean? I, I can't wait. I just can't wait to be landing on you on Saturday. So, you have been following me then? Or you you? I've, seen you, I've, seen you, I've seen your face. I've seen your face. We've had head to head. We've had, we've had so many, we've had so many, we've had so many, we've had so many um, e pressers on that. You're, you're constantly, you know what I mean? For a guy who calls himself too slick, you're constantly always getting, you know what I mean? Hurt and everything. Constantly. But you, can you do something other people can't? Can you like look through, read minds or something? Are you watching the gym or something? I don't know. Because you're just coming out with sh bullshit, basically. Is it? You not I can't wait. Saturday, Saturday <laughs> soon anyway. Don't worry about that. As well, but that's all in the gym, mate. You fucking... 
Oh, oh, then, man. Troy didn't come down as far, then, yeah? Huh? So you've you've had people sparring you. People from Nottingham have sparred you. No, they told me you, you're not you're not strong. Who's that? Who's that? Ryan. Uh, well, Ryan Amos. See, he's Ryan he's, Amos. Yeah, he he's sparred me. Oh, he's sparred yeah. me. He's never yeah. sparred me. That Ryan Amos. No, you lying. Well, you lying. Ryan Amos. Yeah. Let, let me just he's ask Ryan you Amos. both. Let me just ask you both. And he can find his way on the inside. Don't worry about me. Worry about Mate. yourself. You're going to in, in this camp, in this camp. I can't wait. Listen, you're going to find out on Saturday. Like I said, you've been getting punched up in spawn. You get punched up in your fights. You're going to get oh. punched up again on Saturday. I'm, all it is that I'm going to fuck you up some more. That's all it is. That's Let all me all ask you both. This you, know, so you can, you can do. You can dye your hair blonde. You can dye your hair. You can. You could dye your hair blonde to get you know Ivan Drago boost. That ain't going to help you on the night, mate. Ain't going to help you. You could dye your hair blonde. To do all this Ivan Drago look and try and be like, you know, get this self confidence. Ain't gonna do you, you ain't gonna do yourself any justice, mate. My levels gonna be landing all up on that ugly ass face. Is mate, it, Chad? Chad. Years of Chad. Age and you haven't made it yet, and all of a sudden now you're this big, you're the best thing since sliced bread in your own head. Mate, Is if, it? if you <laughs> Is was, it? if you lollipop, you lick yourself to death. You, you literally yeah. look. You said, you said, you said, hold on, hold on. Didn't you say, <laughs> didn't you not say that you're gonna stop me late in the rounds, yeah? And then, yeah. and then you're telling people, oh, but I don't want, I don't want it to, uh, I don't want to put it out there because I don't, want, I, I, don't want, I don't want, I don't want my name, friends name having who a I told that. Order. I don't want my, who have uh, I told that? Who have I told that? You said it in the Jack Fletcher interview, obviously he tags me and everything, so obviously I'm going to come across that, Mate, you know what I mean? You didn't say that. Look, oh, listen, okay. you, okay. you're making a bump in your own head. <laughs> All you right. say you're not talking about me, you're watching every interview. And Mate, I don't need to watch you, I don't need to watch you. You're all that rattled, yeah. You make it. We're the sea. We're the sea. We're the sea. Time, time lads. Way. Back to your corners. <laughs> you're talking now. We're going to have to play referee here. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a double yeah, stoppage listen, until listen, Saturday night. Listen, this ain't we're, we're, kickboxing, bro. This is boxing. Like, gents, this is boxing. gents, we're, we're yeah, running I mean, out of time. Have, you could be, I can listen to this all night. I can listen to this all night, but we are running out of time. Stop talking about kickboxing, mate. You enjoy this? Tune in Saturday night. I've been fighting since five. You're deluded. You're deluded. You're deluded. You're deluded. And we've lost both guys. I knew the time was running out. I did try and separate them, metaphorically speaking. But yeah, if that's just a flavour of what's to come on Saturday night, I'm already hooked and I'll be on the edge of my seat. Um, but now we move on to another title fight on the big Channel 5 show. So it's a Midlands area title fight at Welter between Casey Benjamin, who's held that title in the past, and Connor Walker, who comes into the fight with an unbeaten record. Guys, I try to try and kind of whip up some rivalry between you, but you're actually quite good friends, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've known each other. Associates and through the boxing, we've known each other, do you know what I mean? Um, and obviously, we're on friendly terms, but obviously, business is business, you know what I mean? So, Casey Connor's just dropped an associate bomb on you, still still friendly, or yeah, still friendly. We know each other from, uh, from the amateurs and seen each other in the uh, pro ranks every now and then, so it's always good talks. Casey, people are going to say you've held this title before, you won an eliminator for the English title. Why are you now going back to Midlands area level for this fight? Because I was supposed to fight someone called Lewis Cracker for a British Eliminator. And then he um, got a fight with Lewis Green, who is um, obviously higher than him in the ranking, so it's understandable. And I think they're fighting for a WBO or IBF European or something like that. So, yeah, kind of walking now. Still, still a challenge, so... Head screwed on. And Connor, for you, this could be a, a huge opportunity, not just for the title itself, but to take the scalp of Casey Benjamin and really propel yourself into the discussion for top domestic honours. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I say, um, Casey's, he, you know what I mean, he's been in there and he's proved himself in the pro game. You know what I mean? He's had some, he's took some good fights. I mean, he's took some good fights at Midlands. They've always took some fights and he's pushed on. Um, so, you know what I mean, credit to him. But um, obviously, I'm, I've got to come up and I've got to prove myself on this fight, do you know what I mean? And you've had an uh, unblemished record, well, not unblemished record, you've had a draw, of course, but unbeaten record. You haven't fought the same quality of opposition as Casey has thus far. 
So is this your big kind of coming out party, the, the time when you do take that step up and prove you belong? Yeah, yeah. I've been in the game. I've been in the game for many years, you know what I mean? So it's not as if, you know what I mean? It's not been ordinary. So, um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, it's a big platform. Um, and I've just got to just bring, bring my A game. And um, yeah, obviously, I'll push on from this. This is this give me the big, the big boost I need. And is it one of those, Casey, where... You obviously you get a lot from beating an unbeaten opponent, but you're the one with more to lose in this fight. Do you feel that way? Yeah, definitely. Um, I fought quite a few undefeated fighters now, and obviously I'd like to push on and get into the British and even the English. Obviously, Echo's got that, so I'd even like that fight. So taking nothing past Connor, but it's a like step backwards in my eyes. But I just want to move on and. And after this fight, move on and obviously I'm not over lucky, kind of move on and fight for bigger titles. Normally I try and get you to pick holes in each other's games, but we can see that's not the tone of this relationship. So instead, Casey, why don't you start by telling us what you think is good about Connor, the, the attributes that you admire in his game? Um, I don't really look too much into other people. I focus on myself and every fight I learn from it, even obviously, even if I do draw or... I've got a loss as well, even though that was just in a tournament. But in my eyes, I'm undefeated and I haven't lost yet. And I believe against Danny Ball, even though I wasn't well before the fight, I still fought. And I think that I should have got the decision, but hey-ho. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and I just focus on myself and each fight learn from it and get better. And Connor, what about you? What what do you look at in Casey's game that you find particularly impressive? You know, you know what? He's, he's a sharp shooter, man. He's um he's, he's good at what he does. Um, but you know, he hasn't fought he hasn't fought no one like me. And um, I just feel like I feel like I've got his number in terms of uh, boxing. Um, but yeah, I mean, credit to him. He's he's, he's a great boxer. Um, but yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's got a bit of everything in my eyes. You know what I mean, he's he can, he can work off a bit of everything, but. Um, we'll see, see on the fight. No, do you know what I mean? When you say he hasn't boxed anyone like you, what do you think are your attributes that are unique to you that make you stand out? Yeah, I feel like I'm strong, I'm aggressive, um, and I just think obviously my movement, and um, you know, uh, I think I think I think that that would be a problem for him. And Casey, what about you? What do you see as your own biggest strength? Uh, I'm quick. I can punch. I've got a good chin, and I don't mind having a scrap either. So. Yeah. I'm sure the Channel 5 viewers will be glad to hear that last part. Just yeah. before I, I let you two guys go, is it all going to be handshakes and hugs at the end, regardless of the result? Maybe go for a beer one day in the future? Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 um, we'll have a good fight, and then obviously we'll shake hands after. That's how that's, that's, that's boxing should be, Miles. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Good stuff, guys. Well, we can't wait to see this Midlands area title fight live on Channel 5 this Saturday night. It's going to be a belter, I think. Yeah, definitely. Be a good show. So now delighted to be joined by cruiserweight sensation Isaac Chamberlain, getting ready to fight twice in the space of a short number of weeks. You must be eager to get out there after quite a long time not being able to fight. Um, yeah, I'm very eager. I'm just really, really grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful for you know, Mick um, signing with Mick Hennessy and Channel 5, you know, uh, I'm very, very grateful. And I'm just ready to really put on a show and um, show everyone what I've been doing these past months and years, basically just training and training and really developing myself as an athlete, but even more as a person. And last time we spoke to you, you just linked up again with uh, your trainer, Jorge Rubio, of course. Um, but he's not been able to be involved in the build-up for this particular fight with travel restrictions as they are. Just tell us who you've been working with and how that's um, helped you either learn some new skills or polish the ones you already had. Um, I've been working with Russell. Um, he's a, a Cuban national coach. And Bobby as well. He's, a, he's an amazing um, amateur boxing coach. But, you know, I'm turning professional. I'm there having their pro licenses done. And I think... It's a, it's a great team, you know, a very, um, they work to a great system. They've built a lot of champions before, so, and I really liked working with them. You know, there's no ego there, there's no, you know, I'm doing it for me or whatever. You know, it was really, it's really nice that, um, you know, uh, uh, I've this, this setup, you know, 
how I've done this setup, and I'm just really, really grateful. Has it been frustrating at times in that you had that period where you didn't fight and you did the big deal with Mick Hennessy and Channel 5, which must have been really exciting. You were scheduled to fight twice in a short space of time and then COVID-19 comes from out of nowhere and you're back in a similar position, albeit with some security of having that deal in place. Um, yeah, of course, it was, it was um, it really hurt. You know, it was a really sad time, but I couldn't be, um, I couldn't really be, how can I say it? I couldn't really be like, oh, do you know what? You know, all of this is happening to me because there's certain people that died. People lost their lives and they were really ill. So I don't want to be selfish and think about myself in this moment, you know, because people, certain people have lost their lives and they can't, you know, they won't have their health back again. So uh, I just thought, do you know what? The time will come again. You know, I just have to stay consistent, even if it's a couple more months, stay consistent, stay working hard. And you just have to have a positive mindset to anything you know it's everything is about how you look at it i think that's that's the main thing you can look at it negatively or positively you've got anthony woolery on saturday night two and two and um, former ultimate boxer contender some people look at it and say isaac should win that fairly comfortably however he's coming in with nothing to lose he knows you haven't fought for a while i mean pandemic is a great leveler for everyone in the boxing world He's not going to come to lay down. He's going to be coming with confidence. You, as the more mature, experienced fighter, you're going to have to be on your guard and, and make sure you don't fall to any banana skins, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, Anthony Willery is a, is a very good boxer. You know, um, he has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. But um, the way I'm looking and the way I'm, I'm looking to perform, I think, you know, we should do a very good job. You know, I'm grateful for even stepping in the ring. You know, and and for him to be my dance partner, so I'm just I'm just happy to be in the ring and happy to be fighting. Is it a concern as well because you're going to be fighting on the second show in September, which is only two weeks after the first one? That you're careful you don't get involved too closely, you don't want head clashes, you don't want to get any cuts or anything like that because um, you've got another fight coming up. Not really, you know. As long as we stick to a game plan and stick to the tactics that my coaches have given me, that Bobby and Russell have given me, um, then it, it shouldn't be a problem. You know, um, just have to control my emotions because obviously I haven't fought in such a while. So all I have to do is just be very calm and clinical and um, it should be a great night. Do you think, I mean, obviously we're, you're going to fight twice, but we're coming towards the end of 2020. Do you think 2021 is the year where you really break through, at least to top domestic level and then beyond? Because people have talked about your talent in kind of all tinged tones for such a long time now. You had that kind of ugly fight with Lawrence Okoli, which he's gone on to achieve great things. So there's no disgrace there that you didn't come out on top. But people are waiting for you to really break through now and just show the world how good you really are. Um, definitely. But, you know, it's all in, everything is in God's timing. You know, I can't really just rush everything. You know, everything is, everything will happen when it's supposed to happen. You know, I just have to be patient, you know, and I have to bide my time. And, um, you know, I'm still only 26 years old. All of these guys, you know, I, everyone in the top 10, I'm the youngest, you know. So, all you know, these guys, 30, 31, 32, 33. So, I still have time. So, by the time I'm, the, I'm 29 or 28 even, you know, the, I'll, I'll nearly be at world level or beyond or world champion. And uh, Mick is definitely planning that. You know, he's really trying to... Uh, I put in some great performances in 2020, 2021. We're targeting some great international belts. One thing you can say about Mick Hennessy, and that's aside from kind of dogged determination, longevity in the business, is that he's 100% for his fighters. He gets right behind you. And is that how you found it with him so far, that he's really dedicated oh, as much as you are to where you're going? Definitely, definitely. And it's just, it's like a breath of fresh air because you know how the game is. The <laughs> game is dirty, man. You know, and it's such a breath of fresh air having someone like Mick behind you all the way. You know, my, and I'm a person, I'm, very, I'm a very, very loyal person. You know, and I see that with him as well. I only want to be around people that are like that, like-minded people like me, that want to work hard, that want to do things the right way, and that are loyal as well. So um, it's just, it's definitely a blessing, you know, being around Mick, being around Michael Sal, being around Sham, all of these guys, they're really, really, really cool people. I can call them to talk to them about anything, about my training, about everything. So it's just, it brings a closer connection from me to them, you know? So that's what I'm just... I'm just really excited. I really want to perform, not just for myself, but for the whole team as well, because we're in this together. 
And before we let you go, just for anyone out there who might be on the fence about watching Saturday's show, I don't know why they would. It's a great card top to bottom. But how would you convince them to tune in specifically to watch you? It's free. <laughs> Brilliant. It's free. You just, just watch it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Save the pennies. That's all you need to say. No, but what are they going to see from Isaac Chamberlain? We haven't seen you for ages. Everyone's excited. What are they going to see? Um, you better tune in, man. You better tune in and watch. No spoilers. Yeah, don't don't wait until the highlights are there. Just tune in, man. And I'm just so grateful for all the people that have been um, still supporting me through the whole time. You know, still supporting me, still backing me, and I'm I'm very very grateful. And I just want to do it for those people that were supporting me. Well, we look, we can't wait to see you back in action and we'll be tuning in and we'll see you if you're in fight week as well. So best luck with the rest of your preparations. You. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Cheers, Isaac. Right, right now great. to be joined by Michael Hennessy Jr., who takes the latest steps in a promising pro career on Saturday night. Must be a bit weird so early on in your career and you've gone through a pandemic and you're now yeah. appearing in one of the first, well, the very first on free TV behind closed door shows what's it all been like over the last four to six months uh yeah it's been crazy the last four to six months i've um you know it's, it's not been ideal but uh I've, been, I've stayed fit consistently through lockdown i've been for this fight the majority of training's been done at home pretty much i haven't been sparring a lot i've been trying to see as little people as possible just to avoid catching the virus or symptoms or whatever and uh yeah it's, it's not been the most ideal preparation but I've I've got the training done and I'm fit and ready to go. What's it been like having dad so close while you're doing all your prep work though? Like poking his head around the corner asking how things are going. Has that been a bit extra pressure for you? Uh, you know what? Not really at all, to be honest, because he, he's trained me since I was 11 years old. So he, he was always at training anyway. So it, it's no different, really. It's just... Um, you know, I can't, I can't get away with, you know, sneaking a few biscuits out the cupboard or whatever, you know? <laughs> I kind of remember you when you were about that age as well. I remember you used to always be around the changing rooms and around the boxes and stuff, even back then. Was it always the dream to follow in your, not in your dad's footsteps as a fighter, obviously, he's a promoter, but into the boxing industry? Yeah, a million percent. I've, always, I've wanted to fight since I was like five, six years old. Like you say, I was, I was going to all the shows when I was younger, sitting in all the fighters' laps, mixing with all of them. And, you know, um, my dad wouldn't let me fight until I was 11. He didn't take me to the gym until I was 11. But well before that, when I was like six or seven, he'd regularly find me and my friends in the garden having tea-ups with the little eight-ounce gloves he left from the house. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's always been the dream to, to become a fighter. How are you looking to build this pro career? Because you're ambitious, obviously, as any fighter would be, but you're still very young. And you've already been out in Saudi Arabia. You've been through a lot of different experiences early on. Are you looking to build slowly? Are you looking to be fast-tracked? What's the plan? Uh, slowly but surely. Like I, um, There's no need to fast-track. I'm, I'm 20 years old and you know I've, I've got a great team behind me. My dad knows what he's doing, obviously. He's been doing this for 20 years and he's made world champions. So uh, He's made many world champions and some of the biggest names in, in Britain. So... I'll just be guided by him, really, and he'll know when I'm ready, and then I'll trust when that is. You've got Tom Brennan on Saturday night. How much do you know about him, and how much have you seen of him? Uh, I've only seen his last fight. Uh, I know he's won one, lost one, and uh, I, I saw his last fight on YouTube against uh, Paul Keane, the Scottish champion, which he lost on points in the sixth rounder. But um, other than that, I don't really know too much about him. Um, I, he called me out on Instagram. <laughs> He put it, he tagged me and my dad. He was commenting on the vote. I was saying he wanted to fight and it was a 50-50 fight. So he, he's game and he wants it and he, he's going to be coming to win. He's had a lot of notice for this fight. So it should be exciting. This is the first free-to-air boxing show in the UK since the lockdown. We're expecting a big audience. Don't want to put any pressure on your dad, but you would expect a lot of people to be tuning in. How excited are you of the prospect of appearing on such a big stage? Yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing. I really can't wait. I really want to put on a spectacular performance and, like you say, go out to millions of viewers on Channel 5. It would be incredible. Great stuff. We can't wait to see you either. Always an entertaining fight. Well, I say always. You've only had a few, but they've all been entertaining since so it's 100% record. Can't argue with that. <laughs> um, and we'll see you during fight week as well. I'm particularly looking forward to when you get your testing done and what sort of 
face you pull because I can't imagine it's going to be particularly comfortable. Oh, God, yeah. I've heard stories about all that. I've tried to block it out of my mind until it happens, but yeah, that'd be interesting. Oh, yeah. Sorry to bring it up. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> good luck with that. I'll be gagging. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we look forward to watching you in action on Saturday night. Cheers, Mike. Thank you, Danny. Nice to speak to you. Thank Take you. care. Now delighted to be joined by Idris Virgo. Huge the opportunity. One the one and only. Huge opportunity once again, Saturday night, live on Channel 5. You love the spotlight. You must must be chomping at a bit. Yeah, I love, I love being in front of the camera. It's like, I'm born to do this. When people say they're born to do a certain thing, I was born to be in front of the camera and entertain people. So I just can't wait until um, August 22nd. This Saturday, live on Channel 5. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> We, we're accustomed to seeing you in front of a camera as well. Obviously, we know about the reality TV work you've done in the past. And even on social yeah. media, not a day seems to go by where you're not stirring something up, calling people out. Can it be frustrating <laughs> at times when you want all these big fights, but then you're going in against people because you're still in the early part of your career. You're going in against journeymen, fellow uh, yeah. you know, novices and so on. Uh, how does that feel? Can it be frustrating? No, it could be frustrating and say it could be frustrating, but what people don't understand is like the journeyman that I get, they're coming to take my name, they're coming to take the legacy what I've built, like for example, from a TV writer to TV side of things and my followers. They're looking to come out there and prove a point, like he's just around the TV star, he can't box, he's not a boxer. But what people don't understand is I was doing boxing before I entered the TV world. Now I'm a smart guy, so I'll put both of them together, TV and boxing. So when I'm calling for these big fights, I believe I could take whoever I, whoever I call out. I ain't calling people out just for freaking just the money in the purse. I know I could beat whoever I know who will call out. So these journeymans are fighting, they're coming for the win, but as soon as they feel one of the bombs to the body, one of the bombs to the head, they start running off like chickens. So, hey, you, you can't win everything. You can't freaking please everyone. So it is what it is. Who is it that you really want? Or what titles, what people... We see you calling out different people that you don't lack confidence in yourself. There's no doubt about that. You've got the skills to be um, tested at a higher level. So who do you want? What do you want? I want the. I want the. To be honest with you, I want the best of the best. You know what I mean? Like I'm on. I'm not in this game to hide behind. Oh, I want to protect my zero. Or oh, I don't want to fight him because he's got an amateur pedigree. I don't. I don't really care about that. I want to fight whoever's the best. Really, I want to fight whoever's got the belt. So when I do fight for era title or English title, whoever's got the belt at that certain moment, that's how I want to fight. Who most impresses you in your weight division at the moment? Because there's been, you know, some boxing's come back since the pandemic, nothing on free TV like this. But who, yeah. who are you looking at? Who are you kind of watching? Um, no one really, like... Well, honestly, um, no one because every fight is different. You know what I mean? Every opponent you fight will be different and every like every platform you go on will be different. So I'm not looking at any fight because they might fight that opponent that same way, but they won't fight like that against me because they know they can't. So I'm not really looking at any opponent at this certain moment. All I'm seeing is as, okay, you're decent, but in a couple of months' time, will you still be at that level? Will you get beat? Will you want to fight someone like me? You know what I mean? That's the question I'm asking myself. To, and asking them, but they're not really, they're not there to be asked. But if you get what I mean, but yeah, it is what it is. And it is, as we said, the first free to air boxing show since the lockdown restrictions were eased. What are you yeah. going to do to steal the show? Because all the fighters on there will be keen to make an impression. I'm going to show them sweet science of boxing, and also I'm going to show, show them a knockout. That's the plan. But my coach, my advisor, everyone else telling me don't go out there searching for the knockout. So I'm not going to do that because. When you search for a knockout, you don't get a knockout. But what I would do is showcase my skills and then my skills will showcase a knockout at the end of the night. I've only got four rounds, so it's quite tricky. I'm sick of tired of doing four rounds, but hey, that's what I've been handed with four rounds. So I'll see what I can do in four rounds. And I do believe I will get the guy out of there. Great stuff. Well, we can't wait to see you in action. The whole card <laughs> is really, really enticing. But yeah, I'm sure, you, yeah I'm sure you can't yeah. wait to be back either. It's been a long time. I'm telling you now, it's like... It's like, while, while I'm sleeping, I'm having so much scenarios of how I'm going to finish my opponent. It's crazy. Like, I want to go to sleep one day now. I'm going to finish him this way. I'm going to finish him that way. It's crazy. I can't not wait. I've been out of the ring for about eight months now, nine months tops. 
I can't wait to get back into action and I can't wait with people on TV live on Channel 5 as well. Come on, what can you ask for on a Saturday night? Come on, people, you grab your popcorn, feet <laughs> up, get your Coca-Cola. It's going to be a hell of a night. I'm telling you that now. I'm trying to find Hensy Sport. I'm telling you now, Hensy Sport are going to take over. I like what they're doing, trying to find. So, yeah, come on, let's go. We should just say other cola brands are acceptable. No, yeah. <laughs> no, brilliant. That's really it. appreciate that. And, um, yeah, can't wait to see you. Oh, yeah, sound. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> quick. <laughs> you can do more if you want. I mean, we're, we're all yeah. up for you. Oh, whatever, really. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm a vegan. I'm a vegan as well. If no one knew, have you always been a vegan, or is this a recent thing? I've been a vegan for about a year and eight months now. Um, since I've been a vegan, my power's gone up, my focus gone up, um, concentration has gone up, my stamina's gone up. Everything's just gone crazy, crazy since I switched to being a vegan. So it's been very great being a vegan. To be honest with you. Well, I'm glad we got a chance to, to hear that revelation. We might have missed it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Try it. Try it. Try it, man. Everyone should try being a vegan at least for a month and see how they feel. Yeah, see how they feel first. I promise to give it some thought. Only because you said so, but I'm not yeah, promising anything, but I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> no worries. Please. Where everyone tune in, okay. you hear more about the vegan lifestyle, perhaps, in Idris Virgo's post-fight interview. We shall see. Um, but we'll there see. We we'll catch up with you on fight week, of course, as well. And can't wait to see yeah. you in the ring. There we go. The body breakers here to take over. Let's go.